Hello friends, welcome to another video. Today we're just chilling. I'm going to be doing a spread in my sketchbook featuring my plants. You see, I've recently gotten into succulents and I'm becoming a little bit obsessed, especially with misems, which are the rock looking ones. I got them a grow light the other day because in Japan summer is rainy and winter is cold so they might as well just hang out indoors on a shelf where I can also look at them and enjoy them. Inside though it doesn't get enough light so hence the grow lights. Okay so I'm starting out here with a sketch using purple lead. I think I'm using the uni colored leads. They're really nice for sketching, very erasable, but I found out that they sort of melt and react with alcohol markers, which is a shame. But here I'll be adding color with gouache, so that's no problem. Now, my actual plants are in individual pots, not in an arrangement like this, but that's the beauty of art, you can make stuff up. Actually, since filming this I've added a few more to the group. Here though we got around 7 plants and I label them all at the end of this. Okay, so with the rough sketch finished, I'm starting with the color. It was a bit challenging since I don't draw plants that often, so I decided to start by just blocking in the main colors. I sort of just looked at my plants on the shelf from time to time for reference, both when sketching and when painting, but I didn't try too hard to match things exactly. One really cool thing about succulents is all the colors that they come in. The round one at the back, uh, it's called a baseball plant or Euphorbia obesa. It has a bit of a plate pattern even, that's the main reason I got it. Also, it's round and cute. So this sketchbook is not exactly designed for wet media, so the gouache acted a little weird, but I think I managed. It reactivated a lot more easily than on my regular watercolor paper and even the cheap watercolor paper that I sometimes use. I think it's because in the sketchbook the paper is slightly coated, so the paint just sits on top and doesn't sink in. I don't think I've ever used as much green before. I'm using the Mia Himi gouache set as usual since they're my go-to paints for practice and sketchbook stuff and the paints come in those little cups. So the browns, whites and Prussian blue are pretty much dented. I mean the paint have made a dent in it but the greens just sit there half dry practically untouched. I really need to draw more natural scenes or just maybe do more expressive color stuff. But um, as I said, succulents do come in many colors. So we've got here my brownish purple lithops, which I have probably overwatered because it's very, very plump. I was watering it around once a month, but even that is too much for a lithops, apparently. I think it's all right though, it's just holding a lot of water. The three plants at the front are my lithops, and they are in various stages of their cycle. You see, they usually flower then split and get new leaves and then they absorb the old leaves and then you just hang out doing nothing much for a while and they have different water needs during those stages so putting them all together in one pot like in the drawing would be bad because they are on different schedules. The purplish one I'm painting now is uh, a lapidaria, or also called Karoo Rose. I'm not sure of the pronunciation. It has more of a rounded angled shape and I don't think I painted it so well. It's really hard to capture the color. It's a sort of greenish purple. I'm not entirely sure how I can mix it from paint. Anyway, at this stage I'm pretty much done with the base colors, so here we go with the details and I started with the plaid patterning on the obesa. The patterns are so interesting, I love them, these are really cool plants. Thank you. 
I think you can see here sort of how the paint reactivated really easily when I added the dark green for shadows on top. If you have more absorbent paper, then it probably won't do it like that. It will still reactivate, of course, but it won't do it so enthusiastically. Again, this plant is not as purple in real life, but it gives me sort of a purple impression, so I went with that. The leaves on this plant, a uh, Haworthia cooperi, are actually transparent at the top. This is the first plant that I got and it's supposed to be all round and squat but we had a really long rainy season this year not seeing any sun at all for almost all of July because of cloudy skies and it became a little light starved and sort of stretched up a little and now the top of the leaves are also more triangular. I'm not sure how I can get it to plump up again but at least it's got more light now. And here I go in with the white stripes on this Haworthia. So it's also called a zebra plant for uh, stripy reasons. This one can actually do well indoors with more limited lighting because it's dark green or so I'm told. And to pull the spread together, I labeled all of the plants here. When I buy them, I always try to find out the official name for them because it makes looking up care instructions so much easier. Okay, well, I hope that you enjoyed this video and uh, my uh, little botanical rambles. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe for more of this kind of content, not necessarily botanical, but art stuff. You can hit the bell button to be notified when I upload a new video. And tell me in the comments, how are you at taking care of plants? Do you have a green thumb? Kill even the hardiest cactus? Do you like drawing plants? Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.